Hey there, this is Christina, and this is a case study that I want to share with you, and it's meant to be completely instructive, and um, it's my goal in this is to help you um, learn more about how to approach things as a digital marketing strategist, how to become more sophisticated in um, analyzing opportunities, and I want to go through my thought process and um, just um, show you some things. So um, just a little background on The Hybrid Shop. I'm on their website, um, thehybridshop.com. I'm making this video in July of 2014, and this company was incepted one year ago in June or July of 2013. And it's really exciting. It is, um, they have um, a proven, patented protocol for um, servicing the hybrid electric vehicles. More, uh, more, more specifically, the batteries, um, kind of like conditioning them. There's a certain way in which they are um, discharged and charged back up at a certain um, uh, voltage, intensity, and rate. It's, some, it's like pulses, and um, it's gentle, and there's a certain way in which you do it. And the whole idea is that is to save money and not have to replace the battery, but extend its lifetime, uh, extend its yeah, extend its life. So um, this it's kind of academic, but it's actually a patented. Um, process and um, they have the exclusive rights to sell the training and certification so that um, automotive repair shop owners can participate in this franchise opportunity and have their technicians um, receive education and cert ongoing certification on how to do this so that they can in, um, enjoy additional streams of revenue by servicing hybrid vehicles and really um, with an accurate diagnosis, reliable repairs, and really building trust with um, the hybrid vehicle owner, the consumers. So that's a little background on this. And um, so <clears throat> the important thing it, to, note it, to note about this business is um, the gentleman who started it is an amazing, uh, amazing entrepreneur that had this vision and sees the magnitude of this opportunity. He happened to have, um, he happens to have 30 years experience in the automotive industry with 10, like 10 um, um, automotive repair shops in the Northern Virginia area, Washington DC metro area, millions and multiple millions of dollar business. Um, he sold that and um, probably with some of the proceeds <clears throat> bought the exclusive rights to sell this technology. So um, this is a franchise opportunity, a very world-class, high-end franchise opportunity, and it spans international. I mean, it's going to be, um, it's scalable. I mean, because hybrid vehicles are, are everywhere. And of course, it's more um, more of an opportunity in densely populated areas where the demographics support you know the, the people in that area have a preference for um, buying hybrids so places like California Washington DC make sense at this current time but um, the auto manufacturers keep keep making these cars and um, there's really going to be a full-scale adoption. We're just in the very early phases because it is more environmentally friendly and economic. And there's, there's a lot of things converging, a lot of dynamics converging to make this a, 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 just a really great opportunity. So um, Matt Curry is the person behind this. But um, I just wanted to give you a little background so that you will understand some of the things that I'm going to say here. So they've they've been very successful in sales and marketing and customer service and offline marketing and local area marketing like regional marketing but when you take on something like this you're stepping onto the global 
to the global stage and internet marketing all of a sudden becomes even more important because he wants to, um, well, you know, with 30 years experience in the industry, he has a network. He's very well connected to a lot of people. So in these early phases, he's probably reaching out in a lot of different ways because um, he has already built a foundation. So that's the history of it. Um, but once that kind of becomes saturated and, you know, the, the people that he knows kind of gets on board, we really want to expand this and enhance the discoverability of this opportunity to, you know, other people who don't even know who he is here in Washington, D.C. So um, enhance the discoverability, that's what we want to do and let people know about the opportunity. Not everybody, but this target market. The target market is an automotive repair um, shop owner who is who's living in a certain demographic where there are hybrid vehicle owners, um, either currently or on the rise, predictively on the rise, and somebody with a, um, you know, a, a, you know, a, a decent size uh, operation, business savvy, entrepreneurial, sees opportunity, um, wants to be an early adopter, um, wants to get in there and learn um, new skills and be positioned as the market leader in their area for hybrids. You know, don't wait until, like you want to skate to where the puck is going, right? We want to be pre-positioned. So this is what this is all about. So that's the kind of um, that's the kind of avatar that we're looking for here. So what I was um, going to share with you is right now all they do have is a website and I'm on the home page. So um, I'm, I'm going to be focusing on the, franch the international franchise opportunity right now where the target audience is the automotive res repair shop owner. We're not talking about consumers or hybrid vehicle owners right now, just talking about attracting um, attention for this franchise opportunity. So um, the thing is, he has the website here, and if I were that kind of person that got directed here, I would have to click over, here's already one click, okay, one click over here to dealer opportunities, because that sounds like the most relevant thing for me. And I would start looking at the, the process, the training, and, you know, join our team or the um, menu navigation across the top. And there's some information here. Now, the first thing, um, as far as critiquing, they have um, made about, to date, there's about 34 videos on YouTube, on their YouTube channel. And they have embedded um, a few of them that's relevant to this opportunity onto their website. The only problem is they did not take off, they, they probably should host them on Vi Vimeo instead of YouTube so that they can take off this title because if somebody clicks here, they can watch the video here. However, because there is, you know, an inclination or the ability to click here, if they do that, they're going to be taken off this website onto YouTube where they could easily get distracted and watch some other videos unrelated to the hybrid shop. So um, my first recommendation would be, um, you know, to host the um, videos, um, the ones that you want to embed. I mean, you can put them in both places, but you know, you want to take off these titles and these YouTube icons so that this is just um, so that people will stay on your website. Okay, um, that's the first thing, and there's there's another one here too. Um, there are some testimonials, which is great. Um, it would be good if these were not in grayscale. I imagine these are brands. I think they have color to their logos. So for brand recognition and um, 
yeah, for brand recognition in this industry, like these would be really recognizable to people who are in the auto industry. Um, I would not use grayscale. I would use the colors of whatever these logos are so they pop and that they're immediately, um, the familiarity is immediately there. And then, of course, you have the, um, the, um, the testimonial here in, in, in writing. Um, yeah. So now if I was interested after, you know, going through some of this and I was interested in learning more about this franchise opportunity, here's one more click. So that's, we're already up to two clicks. And there's a contact form and um, there's a phone number. Um, you'd be better off calling the phone number because here we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven seven required fields and then a free text field here that's optional and a submit button. So it took two clicks to get over here and then people would have to fill out seven data entry fields and um, then click another button to submit. Now, um, it's, you know, again, so we're talking about internet marketing, we're talking about optimizing things for conversion, we're talking about we want a response, we want responsiveness, and when you, the more things that you ask a person to enter here, even if they're interested, people are so busy and some people are so lazy that they just won't do it. Or they're looking at this and they're very distracted, maybe they're at work or something, and then they click away and they don't come back. Um, and, you've, and you've lost the visitor, you've lost the potential lead, and the better thing to do is just collect the e first name and email address. Um, I would leave this contact form here. You know, what I'm suggesting, what we're going to get to in a minute, is not to replace this, but in addition to this. I'm just saying that a lot of the leads, um, a lot of the visitors to the site will click away, and this is not really optimized for conversion. It's pro I mean, it's optimized for all the information you want, but you have to trust and understand that you'll get that information later. The most important objective online like this is to capture the lead and build your email list, okay? and um, get on the phone with them later and build out their um, contact record, okay? Um, it's, it's uh, yeah. So the point here being is they don't have an opt-in page. So I noticed that, and what I thought I would do is I took the initiative to create one. So I thought to myself, okay, well, they don't have one, so what would be the best thing to call it? So I decided that I would go get the domain the hybrid shop opportunity.com. So I got that domain, I created this opt-in page, forwarded it, and here is what we have. This is just a prototype. This is a this is a draft. This isn't like perfect. But what I want to um, impress upon you are the elements on this page are very um, intentional. There's a lot of psychology um, under the technology to architect the user experience, and it's all optimized for conversion. When we have a dedicated URL, we will send traffic his offline traffic, he could have this URL on any on his marketing material, his business card, Twitter, Facebook, um, YouTube, um, anything that's we're talking about the franchise opportunity specifically, um, he can drive traffic here, free traffic, and then of course we could talk about paid traffic later, um, Facebook ads, hyper-targeting, things like that later, but my point is you want to drive all the traffic here, okay? on to a dedicated URL, a dedicated page. Okay. So the first thing we have up here in the um, upper left is their brand logo for brand recognition. And here um, to the right of that is some um, five things actually. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five things here that position him 
um, well, the hybrid shop and Matt Curry and his um, business as an authority, okay? Um, and this is public pu publicity that he has received in his former business and in the, in the new business. Um, some of it's um, aged, a little outdated, um, but it gives you a historical perspective that he's been at this for a very long time and is well respected, well known. And then the more recent things um, is just you know reinforcing that you know he's getting publis publicity about his new initiatives. So um, this is like to position him in as, as an authority, give um, instant credibility and you know, show people that he's been in the industry for a long time, he's gotten awards and different things. So um, he was featured in Motor, his company was featured in Motor Age magazine, it's a very popular magazine in this industry. So what I decided to do is grab a screenshot of the cover of that magazine, because it's brand recognition. It's color, it's the logo, people will recognize it. And what I did, what I noticed when I was going to, going looking for this, is there's a recent um, edition of it that says, it has, you know, this is on their cover, um, taking care of today's vehicles. And it's probably, it's about hybrids or something, just coincidentally. So I happened to notice that and I thought, wow, this is so congruent with what this page is all about. Um, and no, he wasn't featured in that one, but still I think that it just gives, um, I think it's a great icon to use for this particular page. So I grabbed it, um, and then uh, there's, he was featured in Northern Virginia um, in 2010, one of the best, of the best um, automotive repair shops. Recently they were on um, Channel 7 News. Um, and Terry Bradshaw's uh, program, Viewpoint, and um, ranking uh, listed in the prestigious uh, Inc. 5000 of growing companies. And um, again, this page is optimized for conversion. All we really care about, we're going to get to this in a minute, is the email capture. List building, lead generation, capturing the name and email address. However, we want to put this stuff up here to um, just to, to begin building the trust. Now, if anybody gets cured, we don't we don't tell anybody to click any of these things. In fact, they don't even appear to be clickable. But if someone gets curious or they can't see the writing and they want to look at it closer and they happen to click. Well, the image doesn't just get bigger. It goes to the, um, it directs to the page where the write-up was done so that they can re read more about it. And we have it, to we have it configured so it opens up in a new window so that people never really click off and away from this page, which is another thing you don't want to do. Um, this one uh, actually doesn't click through to anything. I couldn't find the supporting um, article. I think maybe it's just because it's archived. Um, and then this one goes to the YouTube channel. With gas prices hovering around $4 a gallon, the price of getting a hybrid car seems like a no-brainer, maybe. But okay, so they can watch that. And um, Terry Bradshaw, too. I've been surrounded by some of the greatest athletes of all time, and every one of them had their own unique formula for success. Okay. And the Inc. 5000. And it's an authoritative website. And there they are. Okay. So, in case anybody clicks, we do have some additional stuff for them to look at to reinforce that, yes, he's been around a long time. So, um, okay, that's all for the top bar. Okay, so we have this um, industry guide. This is the lead magnet. This is the um, free um, immediate digital download that they get that tells them all about the opportunity and um, more about the battery conditioning, the implementation specific detail about that, and, um, and who this is for, and, you know, if it's right for you, if it, you know, things like that, all the details about this franchise opportunity. So 
we do we have right here free guide for automotive repair shop owner reveals and the headline is your advertising for your advertising you want you know want people to continue reading so you have to grab their attention so yes there's something free on this page for whom like who's the target audience well it's automotive repair shop owners and the use of the verb the word the verb <laughs> reveals kind of um, has the kind of vibe that this is an early opportunity it's a secret like just going to let you in on something that not too many people know about yet and you can be one of the early adopters and enjoy all the benefits of you know first movers advantage so reveals is like saying there's some kind of secret here but um you know i'm going to tell you about it okay so and then the sub headline is how you can begin increasing revenue in the next 60 days by servicing hybrid vehicles. So, the, you know, this is the promise of what you're going to get um, when you give your email and receive this book. Um, it's going to be how, so how means implementation, kind of like more details. You is personalized, personalization, because you always want to be talking to one person, even though this is going to be seen by thousands. Um, this is a one-on-one -on -one conversation to, to one person at a time. And what is most important to them? Well, what's going to what's going to be compelling? What's going to catch their attention? Increasing revenue. Who doesn't want to do that? And in the next 60 days, so it's not going to take you a very long time to um, go through the onboarding process. I mean, this is something you know that can you can be up and running within like the same calendar quarter. You know. And how, like, what, how are we going to do this? By servicing hybrid vehicles. Because um, these, are, these vehicles are still relatively new, and the truth is not everybody knows how to service them in a consistent, you know, type of a way. Um, so, you know, that's the, um, propos the value proposition. So these... Uh, these bullets should really be a lot shorter so I just want to say that first of all but I wanted to kind of get all my thoughts out and then maybe I can um, shorten them up but um, let's just go with what I have right now to show you um, like what I'm trying to convey in each of them this is benefit driven language so I'm going to read you the first one right now learn the best practices proven protocols and methods to properly diagnose and reliably repair any hybrid vehicle, earning the trust of the affluent, environmentally conscious consumer who will return to your shop when traditional components need servicing too. Hint, they usually have more than one car. So, what's, G what's G value packed in into this uh, uh, sentence here is you're going to learn the best practices, proven protocols, prop to, you know, properly and, and accurately diagnose these cars and reliably repair them, okay? So we're talking high quality here. We're talking about um, giving your, your technicians, your A players, you know, expanding their skill set. And why? So that you, as the business, um, in your local market can earn the trust of the most affluent, environmentally conscious consumers that are in your radius. And when you do that, I mean, think about it. I mean, every business transaction, online or offline, there's an element of trust. People want to do business with people that they know, like, and trust. And this is, you know, across, across industries. Um, especially like if you have a doctor or surgeon or a dentist, or, but, it, but it's even more, it's even more pronounced when you're taking your car to get repaired, when something broke and you, and you know, you have no idea what's wrong, you just need your car to work and you take it to an auto repair shop and just, you know, the, the anxiety about that, especially, you know, let's just say it, especially if you're female, you just don't want to be taken advantage of and you just don't know enough about what they're doing or what questions to ask or how to assure that you're, you know, taking it to a good place. 
and you're just kind of hoping for the best, <laughs> you know, and that's not a good, that's not a good place to be, like peace of mind, uh, and this is just for tr with traditional cars, okay, so imagine if you have a hybrid, which is relatively new to you and all the auto technicians, you're sort of wondering, like, gosh, I wonder how many of these they've done before, and, you know, we're not, we're not supposed to be understanding what's going on under the hood and all this complexity because in our daily life we have our own jobs and careers and businesses and subject matter expertise that, you know, we need to be able to trust somebody, you know. It's not our highest and best use to know how to do every single thing in our car. So we want to go somewhere where we can just relax and know that we're going to be taken care of. And if we have that experience, we are so excited that we will take our car back again for hybrid related repairs as well as any traditional components of the car that might need repaired. I'm going to take it back to the same person that I trust. And if you're servicing this demographic, it's highly likely that, first of all, they have more than one car. And that car could be a hybrid car or non-hybrid car, but if you earn their trust, you're going to get the business. Um, and they have other friends that are probably very similar to them with cars or <laughs> hybrid cars. So um, let them do the, mar you know, give them a great experience and let them do the marketing for you. They will talk over dinner, on the phone, via text, at the gym. They'll talk. People talk. They'll talk on social media. They might even take pictures. They will have, po they will express positive sentiment and, um, accompanied with the hybrid shop with your brand name and um, on Facebook and Twitter and you know in Yelp and different places you know it, or, it, it will organically happen and this is what you want especially in this age of social media so when you or when you do this it really has a it really has a rippling effect and you have to understand the compounded effect, the potential it has when you can learn how to do this, service people, earn their trust, and have them referring people to you and have them talking about it positively across social media. With brand mentions, photos, also reviews, all sorts of things. It's really a great investment all the way around. All right, so the second bullet, I'm going to read it to you, is um, another benefit is to take advantage of this early opportunity to fully equip your shop with the processes, training, and equipment that will position you as the hybrid service leader in your area, quietly taking business away from local competitors who aren't paying attention to the trends. So in this one, what we're saying um, and also, notice the text enhancement and the capitalization of the words that are most important. Early opportunity. This means that, you know, this has only been around a year. You can get your foot in the door and begin um, positioning yourself as the service leader for hybrids in your area. And fully equip your shop, okay? We want to use the word you, position you as the hybrid service leader, your shop, bring it back to their, you want to bring to their imagination their shop, okay? Um, personalize it, okay? Your area, so they can imagine what it would be like, your kind of future pacing, them imagining themselves as, okay, I'm going to learn this stuff and I'm going to have a competitive advantage and quietly taking business away. That sounds very sneaky, right? Because you're getting in early. I'm, I'm sharing with you an opportunity, um, and you can enjoy this, this first mover's advantage and get the lion's share of the business. And we're, we're also appealing to their um, intellect by saying, you know, you're intelligent enough. You're paying attention. When other people aren't paying attention, right? You have stum stumbled across this, or you're paying attention to things where you've you know the trends, and you found out about this, and you're going to capitalize on it. So you're sort of honoring their, their, um, you know, their, their intellect about getting into this early. 
Okay, and then the third one is have your technicians gain competency in hybrid batteries and the entire drive system so that you can begin offering this unique capability. Why? To differentiate yourself among consumers and begin running with industry peers who stay agile, profitable, in the top 1-3%. to So, this is an opportunity to, 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 you know, to give your technicians, and I'm sure your technicians love cars, right? And they're just going to be like salivating over this new opportunity to learn how to do this because that's their thing. And they're going to learn about hybrid batteries and the drive system and all the interdependencies and how things are integrated together and the battery charging and discharging and conditioning and all these sorts of things, right? And anybody, you know, that's in industry and they love what they're doing, they're going to be hungry to know this and to mas- learn and practice and master it and keep their jobs and keep their, their, their marketability, job security, things like that. Um, but you're building out a team that's going to make you look good because you're the business owner. You're the shop owner. All right? Unique capability. Um, because this is a patented, proven protocol, and it's, you know, it's, 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 it's exclusive. So not everybody's going to be doing this with the same consistency, which gives you the same reliability. And just, you know, it's really, it is a unique capability that you're going to get in on when you um, participate in this franchise. And, you know, of course, you know, we alluded to the fact that you're going to differentiate yourself and position yourself as a leader among consumers and accrue that trust. But you're also, another benefit is within, within your industry, you're going to begin running with industry peers who are the A players, who are in early, who stay innovative, who stay profitable, who can pivot on a dime, who will reinvent themselves, who are looking for additional revenue streams, who are opportunists, who are paying attention um, to the news, who are reading uh, between the lines for opportunities, for trends, for consumer preferences, um, purchase behavior, paying attention to all these things, inflation, um, who's in office, political things, everything that's converging to make the hybrid um, market, um, you know, just a magnitude of opportunity here, okay? So you're going to, you know, elevate yourself and be able to be in this, like, club or fraternity or, like, whatever you want to call it, but more elite, upper echelon people of the auto industry because you know there's, like, you know, in any business, there's a spectrum of quality, and this is going to attract the A players, and that's what you want, because you want to attract them and repel and polarize the other people, because you really don't need to be wasting your time with people that are just kicking tires, right? Let's use an industry uh, an- analogy. Okay, so um, this is the um, cover art for their industry guide. I didn't prepare this. Somebody else uh, did the graphic design. But this is 3D cover art, and this is what we use for internet marketing. And 3D cover art, even though this is an immediate digital download, what it essentially is is a PDF, a document. But when you're when you have an opt-in page, you really want to show something tangible. Um, even though they're not really getting a book, you want to show them that because it just makes things more real online. It just makes things more real. So 3D cover art's great. It's green, which is the color of, you know, environment and renewal and recycling and things like that. Um, So that's great color and has the car there, has the title and subtitle. And the most important thing about this besides the um, color is that it's angled. It's angled to the right and that's exactly what we want because we want a line of sight. We call it line of sight. It it just, you know, uh, subliminally, your eyes are going to follow this angle right here to the headline. Perfect. And that's where we want people to start reading and guide their eyes over here to this body of text, everything on the right. So um, that's all I wanted to say about that. And then below that is um, a, a uh, a symbol that's very recognizable to download now. 
I'm going to show you what that does in a minute. But this um, little phrase here underneath the book is for social proof. Um, this is what we want to do. We say hundreds of forward-thinking automotive repair shop owners around the globe have already downloaded this industry guide. Now, I'm not sure exactly how many have downloaded this guide in the past year. It may be over a thousand. I'm not sure yet because I haven't talked to the owner. However, I wanted to be conservative and, you know, you want to be honest here. You don't want to, you know, this is not about being dishonest. But once you know how many downloads you have, like how many email addresses you have would be like an implicit way of figuring that out, you can put here over a thousand forward-thinking automotive shop owners have downloaded this, or thousands after you reach uh, 2,000, right? Um, you want to quantify it because what you're implicitly saying here, what you want to understand about this is... It's not so much what you're saying, but what is meant. It's not so much about what is written, but what is understood between the lines. So you're basically saying, you better get in on this because there's already been thousands of people that have downloaded this in your industry. So you need to stay on top of your game because your competitors could be and probably are moving forward with this opportunity and, you know, you want to get in into this first to um, really make an impact. So that's what this is about, okay? And we just have some copyright information down here, legal stuff. And this right here is, yes, send me the free guide. It's affirmative, it's assumptive, it's a singular call to action. It's the only thing we want them to do on the page is click this. And when they do, they will get a shadow box here where they can enter their email address and their first name. Again, for um, visual congruity, we have the same book right here to the left. And um, privacy thing, security thing here and um, just, you know, another call to action. Now, the other thing is if they happen to click this, if this is more recognizable than this because this is a custom button, okay, if they happen to click this, it does, does the same thing. So they're going to enter their name and email address, and they're going to get it. You're going to um, the, um, gonna build, your, build the list. They'll receive the immediate digital download, and this is what will happen. So... Don't you think that this company would benefit from, in addition to their um, website here, they could drive traffic to this page. And particularly, um, online, offline, paid, free, anything, driving traffic to the hybrid shop opportunity.com so that um, you will definitely... Um, this page is optimized for conversion. You'll, you'll, you'll definitely get the, well, I shouldn't say definitely, like 100%, but you will get the opt-in here more frequently than you will over here because we have to go through one, we have to click that, go through all this, and not, and, you know, not get distracted, get actually all, get all the way to the bottom here, click this, enter seven fields and click again. Okay, that is a lot of work. Believe me, online it's a lot of work. Versus sending them to a dedicated URL where in a few seconds they can read this, decide if it's for them, one click, two fields, and another click. So, and the thing is, we could just ask them for their email address, but we don't want to. We would do. We don't want to do that. We want to ask for the first name too. Um, the reason we want one more field there is because we want to achieve personalization in the digital world. Because in our future correspondence with them, um, we really want to address them by their first name in our email outbound communication. Um, just if you only have their email address and not everybody's name is in their email address, you know, some of them are kind of, you know, ambiguous. How are you going to address the person? How are you going to personalize it? It's going to sound like you're broadcasting to a group and you don't want to do that. You want to have a one-to-one -one conversation. So it is important to capture the first name and, you know, make these both required fields.
So your, the email list is an asset and you begin building it and you're trying to reduce the number of steps and the number of clicks to the least amount, the least amount necessary to get the response that you want. And elements on this page, attributes of this page um, are all configurable. The colors, the font, the font size, the font style, the copywriting, the mess you want to have a message to market match, you want to hit on some triggers because think about this, this is an offer. In the same things that apply to sales apply to to, to this too. I mean, this is an offer. This happens to be a free offer. What we're giving them is this industry guide and an early opportunity. F in exchange, instead of taking money, we're receiving their email address. So this is a free offer. Free offers have the purpose of lead generation. If this was a paid offer, if this if had something for sale, then we would be forfeiting an email address for money. Like we would be selling something and we would receive money. So it's monetization when it's a, you know, a paid offer and there's a shopping cart and everything like that. And usually you do that kind of a thing later after you have an email address. So when things are free, it's a lead generation strategy. You give away something of value for free. When it's paid, you accept money in exchange for whatever it is that you're giving them. Here, we're trying to build an email list. We're trying to capture leads that we can follow up on and sell the franchise opportunity to, get people set up, trained. You know, there's a um, kind of like a, we need a pipeline because people have to have hands-on training. They have to be scheduled. They have to come out with the equipment and the computers and everything to their location, train their guys. Um, get them certified, um, install the equip install and test the equipment and um, so they can be up and running in, in within 60 days. So um, and of course collecting the franchise fee and just getting on with all this, right? So this is what this page is all about. My point is it's all the same as far as the copywriting and the um, principles of direct response. You're making an offer either way, whether it's free or paid, whether you're receiving as compensation, like whether you're receiving the email address or you're receiving money, like dollars, in your merchant account, you are still making an offer and you still need to have a message to market match, have some, a compelling headline, give them more, give them benefit driven language that have triggers that would be emotional for this target audience. You want to say who this is for, who this is not for. You want to um, future pace them into imagining this for themselves and what it might be like and the benefits that they will receive immediately and like near term and long term. And that's how you craft your words because word choice is not inconsequential. It is so important. And you know, we use psychology here and technology. We we kind of fuse them together to architect a user experience and and to do business and to advance business and get momentum behind what we're trying to do here because really what we're trying to do is empower businesses to have additional revenue streams that's that's going to that's going to be beneficial to them. They're going to accrue trust with consumers. Consumers are going to be happy because they're going to have a reliable source many many sources across the United States across the um uh, the globe actually where they can take their cars. That's good because they can be reassured, they can be have peace of mind. They know that if they they get this car that they never have to worry about the battery no matter where they are. There's trusted repair shops that they can go to anywhere. So that is reassuring. That's going to increase sales for hybrids. That's going to impact the environment. Um, there is just so much cascading here that's so good to, to in, in this, um, you know, it seems so simplistic, this page, but this is like a stepping stone to so much more. I mean, stepping stones, baby steps, all of our skills, Matt Curry skills, the individual franchisees, the, the automotive repair shop, 
their skills, the technician skills, um, creating trust in the market so that more people buy hybrid vehicles, um, less emissions, less uh, dependency on oil. I mean, you can just go on and on. The benefits extend beyond, I mean, they're economic, they're environmental, they're entrepreneurial. This is very lucrative. This is a very... Um, Gosh, there's just so many things. It just cascades, and, you know, I have so much deep respect for Matt Curry to um, have the vision and notice this early and partner up with Mark Corto, which is the um, brains behind it all, the, the, um, the, the protocol and the process of, of doing this battery conditioning to extend the life of the battery so they don't have to keep replacing them and and adding more debris and environmental waste to the waste stream and um, just increasing efficiencies, really, increasing life of the batteries. And, um, and I'm sure more things are coming down the line. I mean, we have more and more electronic, I'm not electronic, electrical uh, vehicle chargers. There's like a network of them popping up. Um, some of them are complementary. Most of them are paid. Um, they're going to be spaced out 25 to 35 miles um, apart. Just like we have gas stations everywhere, right? Or seem like around every corner. Well, we're going to have EV chargers. They're going to become um, ubiquitous in the coming years. So um, there's that network that's going to be built out. And those people that are going to profit and have... Um, you know, utility, and there's utility in that, so I'm really excited, and this is, you know, this is, like, for, um, the whole spectrum of hybrid cars, because there's, like, more and more manufacturers are making hybrid cars, you know, of course, the Toyota Prius, the Chevy Volt, all the way up to the Tesla, um, Model S, Model 3, um, so the whole socioeconomic strat strata, strata, um, can be impacted with this, and it's really a great era to be, it's really a great time to be, um, doing this, because we have the leverage of the internet and social media, and even the software that makes these pages so, this is lead pages, like, makes this page so easy to configure and get the message out, and build the list, and follow up with the people, and um, communicate the opportunity at a global scale. We're going to pair this with podcasting, because podcasting, uh, I could go on and on about podcasting, but <clears throat> the same market, affluent, environmentally conscious people, those are exactly, where would you find them? You're going to find them in the iTunes store. You're going to find them listening to podcasts. You're going to find them in the iTunes store searching for subject matter expertise on hybrid vehicles because they're going to learn more about their vehicle. Um, they're going to want to learn more about it if they're doing the prerequisite research before they purchase the vehicle. Where do you think they're going to go? People don't have time to read books. They don't even have the attention span or patience to read books. They want something that's portable. They want something that's audi aud audible, audi audio, and um, they're turning to podcast. And blogs of course but you're going to in videos but the thing with the the thing about podcast is it's an international audience and um it's an affluent audience it's a good demographic and um it's 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 the highest it's the greatest roi on your time as far as lead generation because there's nothing else that you can do to get that attention share and that's exactly how I want you to characterize it attention share you can make your podcast as long or as short as you want but they've got your voice which is very intimate just like you're listening to my voice right now more intimate than reading text and you have them they have you in their earbuds for 20 minutes for 40 minutes for 60 minutes once a week consistently over time, month after month. Sometimes you might be do twice a week. You might, um, you want to educate, right? The person that educate, you know, who, the, the, who 
whoever educates the market dominates the market, okay? And when you educate them, they're going to come to you because they trust you. They, you're showcasing your credibility and your competency and your confidence. And you bring industry leaders on from time to time and you interview them too. And it shows that you're well-connected. It shows that you're committed. It um, positions you as an authority. And it accrues trust because you just can't get that contiguous attention share with anything else. It's powerful. Powerful lead generation strategy. International audience. There's iTunes. Every country can download your podcast episodes. And it has a compounding effect. Just like, you know, if just like you have blog posts over time, over weeks, months, and years, and you have the SEO that builds up and the historical content, same thing with the podcast. Begin doing it. Do each episode exceptionally well. It's once and done. It's leverage. Every episode could potentially be the first impression, the first time someone encounters you and discovers you. So each one you want to do exceptionally well, and then it's done. It markets you. People can spend time with you online when, when you're off doing other things. I mean, you could be repairing cars. You could be training your auto technicians. You could be signing another franchisee up on, in this opportunity. Um, you could be at the beach. You could be with your children. You could be at dinner. You could be at the gym. You could be at the dog park. You could be on a flight in the air. Like, you could be anywhere. And this is happening. This is happening, and there's a compounded effect. Just like compound interest, right? I'm serious. It's just like compound interest. This is an asset. Your email list is your asset, and in addition, all your education-based content and marketing that's out there, sitting out there, is working for you 24-7 to a global audience, enhancing the discoverability of your brand, your opportunity, and... Um, and people can share it and talk to other and tell other people about it too. So I think I'm gonna end this video here. As you can tell, I am just this is what I love to do. This is what I love to do. I love to do case studies. I love to show you my approach, how I think about things, my decisions, why I do what I'm doing. And also I wanna say that it's not me. <laughs> it's not just me. I wasn't born knowing how to do this, although I've been in the IT field since the beginning of the internet. I have been online working, um, getting people online since 1996, since the beginning of the internet. I have been a consultant with Accenture and Oracle and worked with global brands, government agencies, the DOD here in Washington, D.C. Metro, um, establishing people's internet presence optimizing their presence, working with CRM systems, um, working as a senior business systems analyst, architecting solutions, integrating uh, disparate systems and making sure that messaging can happen between them, can be routed and reformatted between disparate systems inside and outside of an enterprise, um, doing proprietary, proprietary software development, software development lifecycle with CMMI, companies at level four, certified at level four and five so templates and repeatable methodology software development life cycle agile development scrum meetings things like that um for um, proprietary software different applications, software applications that are needed in different industries so i can learn any new industry like that i know the questions to ask i know the prototypes and the wireframes to draw up um, I know how to document and diagram and articulate requirements. I also know how to elicit them from people that are not so sure what they want. And this, is, this transfers to mobile apps too and iPad applications, iPhone applications, all sorts of things. And I love internet marketing um, on the high end, like the, not the low end kind of get rich quick scheme type of kind of crazy things that are out there. Um, no, 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 none of that. Um, I look for companies that are doing really, really great things in the world, and I like to partner with them and collaborate with them and really add momentum to whatever they're doing. 
So I couple my skills with their skills. And um, I want to show you how you can do the same because we need people with this skill set. I know I've been in the industry for a very long time, and a lot of this stuff has compounded and accrued for me. Like I've kind of assimilated more and more and more and more and more. But that doesn't mean um, that all of that is required. That just means that I have a different vantage point, and I sort of have watched the evolution of this. But um, things are getting so much more like less difficult, the barrier to entry is lower, the software, this, you know, a lot of people have SaaS based companies, like software as a service, things reside in the cloud, there are less cables and peripherals around and, and things are getting smaller and more consolidated and a lot of previously, things that are previously physical, material, um, mechanical, are being dematerialized into software, they're being collapsed centralized, consolidated into software, and they're being hosted and reside in the cloud. And um, it's just very efficient, very, the speed of, of, of implementation and things that can be done is um, just so much more <laughs> than when it was when I first started. Like when I first started, we had NetZero, we had Napster, we had dial-up modem, like 24K, I think, maybe 56K was like, oh my gosh, it's, you're, you're like, you got the best modem in the world. <laughs> it was shared with a phone line, like you couldn't use your phone. And there were no cell phones back then. Or Well, there were, but they were like car phones, like were emergency only. So like, if you were online, you couldn't call anybody, nobody could call you. Like it was shared with a phone line, like a landline, like a what do they call, uh, P P uh, PSD, I don't know, PSDN, DAO, like circuitry, I can't remember. Anyway, there's RJ45 cables everywhere, USB cables everywhere, huge monitors, um, huge, uh, it's just everything was really big and bulky and dot matrix printer loud and modem screeching. I mean, I've been, I should write a book if I could just get myself together to write a book or something because I have watched it all evolve and it's so much easier now than it has ever been. You don't have to code, you don't have to program, you don't have to know HTML or CSS or, or you know, all these things. I mean, WordPress has just really democratized things. It's, you know, there's so many entrepreneurs, uh, solo entrepreneurs, businesses popping up. I mean, people in their 20s and 30s, like millionaires, like, it's just amazing. And the, but back in our day, it was like we sort of, things weren't mature enough then. Okay, things hadn't maturated yet. Um, we just had websites that were like just informational, like just HTML, just like text based. There wasn't even JavaScript. You couldn't even mouse over anything and see. You know, we just um, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah. So I mean, even though I had all this enthusiasm and and everything that I see all the go getters, the Gen Y go getters doing now, I did all that back then, but there was too many constraints. There was constraints of bandwidth. There was constraints of resolution. Um, maximum concurrent users. Uh, just like all sorts of things. Like we were constrained. Uh, we didn't have, it hadn't maturated. I mean that's why the whole dot com thing fell apart. It's because everybody sensed, sensed the, the um, potential of the internet creating all these companies with no really understanding it's all too new. It's all too new. So um, I really sometimes wish that I was born into the Gen Y era because you're living in the most advantaged technical technology era ever. And social media on top of the internet, um, the reach that you have, the voice that you have, the democratization the dematerialization of things to software. There's just so many things converging that's making it so easy to have a business, so easy to get your targeted messages out there to the right people at the right time, the right opportunity, just like this. Um, it's amazing. It's amazing. It really is. So take advantage of it. Um, I kind of gone off on a tangent. That's because... I have this attention. I'm focused, but I still have like, I just, there's so much in my head. I really need to create more content to get it out of my head and let people know, you know, help empower other people, let people know what they can do, how to approach things, how to make decisions, how to um, 
spot opportunities, how to um, create amazing opt-in pages, how to create your funnel, right? How to drive traffic to it, how to optimize it for conversion, um, look for gaps in, the bus- in, in your um, online business, <sighs> when it makes sense to create an online course, a product, a program, a membership site, and what, do you, and, you know, what tool to use. There's like so many popping up. There's so much. And if you're not technical, sometimes you don't know how to evaluate them. So, um, and I do. So, I think I'm going to end this video here and post it. And I wanted to use this as a case study about how to help somebody that doesn't have an um, opt-in page yet and... Um, just take the initiative and build out a prototype and show it to them. They're going to be really impressed. And I think that this is a great ROI on your time because, first of all, you, you're likely going to win the business. You're likely going to get the business. You're going to impress the owner that you've taken so much time to do this. And if for some reason they already contracted with someone else, you know, or something, and you don't get the business, they will remember you. They will remember you. And if something happens, like you just never know with them and their incumbent, they will remember you and what you did for them. And maybe they'll give you some other work, or maybe they'll replace that person or company if something, if they fail to perform. So... Nothing is ever lost. And also, you're getting practice. You're getting practice creating opt-in pages. You're getting practice in your own business um, of, of, um, of you know, lead generation for yourself, right? And creating a prototype, mocking up a page like this, and thinking to yourself, okay, this is going to be part of my demo to them, so I have to make it really good. What can I pull into this page? It's giving, going to give you practice copywriting and thinking about this stuff. So even if you go through this whole thing, it's a great exercise to go through and make this page, even if you don't win their business and they don't use you as a digital marketing strategist, you've just enriched yourself by practicing real time with something like this that could lead to an opportunity in the best case scenario. In the worst case scenario, you are getting practice. You're not just sitting there, I don't you know what other people are actually doing because this is what I do. I look for opportunities and what I do is I invest time, right? I just go ahead and I pretend I literally put a hat on and pretend that I'm Matt Curry or that I'm his CMO. And I'm like, what would I do? And I just go and do it. And if he wants to do business, we will just replicate this page under, you know, he will buy the software that created this page. So he owns this and we will replicate it in there. I'll, I and, and since I've already done it once, I will be able to do it fast, do, do it, re- replicate it immediately um, for him. And of course, we might modify some things per um, his instruction, you know. And this domain, I just, I pick out a domain. I make everything relevant to the customer or pr- prospect, prospective customer. I want a demo that he can relate to. I want it very, very close to up and running. So if they say yes, boom, we're, we're, we're off to the races. Okay, and then you just transfer this domain to him. I mean, you, have, you know, you have to negotiate a contract or a, a, um, a retainer or a percentage or whatever it is that you're doing, and you know, then just give this give this over to them. Take the initiative. It's time well spent. It's time well invested. You don't get your time back. Okay, you don't. Time is our most irrecoverable recoverable asset. If you don't invest it, you don't get it back. So do something like this. Find an opportunity and take on the perspective of that entrepreneur. Because this is a B2B, if if I win this business, this is a B2B transaction. I mean, B2B relationship. I'm an entrepreneur. He's an entrepreneur. He is stellar and tiers and tiers above me. However, we still have the same thinking. We still have a lot in common. So... You know, he took initiative, 
he took action in a very, very, very big way. So he's going to be impressed if I take action in, the, in this sort of way, right? So that's how you have to look at it. You're an entrepreneur. They're an entrepreneur. Be bold. Be enthusiastic. I mean, be real. I mean, you have to, obviously, I mean, if you don't love the stuff and you don't like the niche, then don't fake it. I mean, there's no way you can. You'll be found out. Be authentic. But put your best foot forward. This is just like this page, like just like this page will be somebody's first impression of the hybrid shop. It's so analogous. I mean, this whole demo is going to be his first impression of me when I show him this. He's going to be like, dang, that girl went and did all this for free in advance just to show me what's possible? Wow. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to do. You want to wow people. You know, there, this market is so crowded. There are so many people. I mean, I can't even, seriously, I can't even differentiate quality among my peers. I'm not, people put a label, a, a, you know, it, it's hard to even know who does what, what their unique abilities and aptitudes are, how to choose somebody. And I'm in the industry. Imagine someone outside the industry. How are they going to know that you are competent, that you are, you know, going to be there to implement and, you know, and have the tenacity if something goes wrong. I mean, how are they going to know your character and your, and your competency and your abilities? How are they even going to distinguish that? What they're going to do is they're going to look for people that are doing podcasting, of course, that are blogging. I, I'm not that prominent in that because I haven't started doing any of those things. One of the things I do is I do this. Because I really like getting down into into this and um, showing something that's personalized to them. And I think it's just because I'm technical that I sort of like to do this. I mean, everybody, you, you have to find something that differentiates you and showcases your abilities to someone in advance because you want to give them results in advance, Okay. Show them what they're going to get if they go with you. That's what they want to know. People want to have a certainty. People want to have a certainty about their decisions. So, blah, 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 blah. I've said so much in this video, and I think I said I was going to end it 10 minutes ago. But I'm going to end it here, and I hope this was a good case study for you. And if you have any questions, let me know. And we can discuss this page further, discuss this case study, this company, the website, and how these two work together. Um, oh, I did forget to say one more thing. Um, once somebody opts in here, okay, you can configure a redirect. Like, where do you send them after they opt in, right? They're not just going to go back to this page. Why would you do that? No. I send them right to here into this uh, dealer opportunity. So, you know. They're going to receive this as an immediate digital download in their email, but where do we want this browser, like, where do we want this to go after they opt in? I want them to go here, but not the home page and not any of these other menu items. I want them to go right to dealer opportunities because this is what we're talking about. We're, we're, you know, this would be the great, great page. Now that we got their email address, they can go to this content-rich site, look at all the media, click around. I don't care because I'm not trying, I'm not hinging or hedging my bets that they're going to get give me their email address here because it's very questionable very low percentage that they're going to do it on on the website there's an increased chance that they'll be responsive and do it here because that is our that's all we're asking here so i hope you enjoyed this video have any questions let me know and i will talk to you soon this is christina president and founder of creating digitalassets.com